privilege to welcome you here this morning. Thank you so much for coming to church. We know you came expecting a blessing. You came to be a blessing. So let's share that with each other and have a good Sabbath day. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, this is um, Mr. Dinner Sabbath and uh, any who uh, are alone uh, and visitors, we want you to be welcome downstairs for the fellowship dinner there. So thank you so much for being here. Also, call your attention to the items of finance inside the bulletin. Take a look at it, church expense, uh, 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 school, and also let's get this parking lot finished up. And thank you so much for your strong support for the financial opportunities and challenges that we have here in this church. So we're glad you're here today. Thank you so much for being here. At this time, um, music. Announcements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> How many? <laughs> All right, come on up. I just want to thank everybody for um, bringing food this month. And uh, I just want to give you the yearly totals of what we have already given this year and the monetary value as well. Um, the yearly total of food, the pounds, 248 is the total. And uh, given in money is $440. So I thank you all for your participation and uh, Doorstep thanks you as well. And uh, it doesn't get any uh, easier because the month of uh, September, we have given away 15,884 pounds of food. That sounds like a lot, but we have people coming all the time to get food. And a lot of them have big families, like 10 living members. So, and we have also distributed $16,500 worth of clothing. And that doesn't include all the um, other things that we give, uh, like bus fare and I don't know what all, but there's a lot, there's a long list that we give. So anyway, thank you for your participation this month and we really appreciate it. Uh, one other thing I would like to mention is, I'll put this out on the bulletin board, is the health kits that we need for Christmas. We uh, put a total of 260 kits together. Um, we serve a lot, that many families. So uh, we are needing things like uh, shampoo and conditioner, a bar soap, toothpaste, brushes and combs, bath towels, body wash, deodorant, toothbrushes, and uh, so on and so forth. So I will put this out on the bulletin board and uh, we appreciate it so we can get uh, a handle on starting to uh, make these kits up for Christmas because we do serve a lot of families at Christmas time. So thank you very much. It's that time of year again when we are preparing the boxes for the college students. So we need to get stuff together for them. From the list that I've received, I have three names. There could be more coming in, but I have three names. Uh, you can certainly bring your items in, food, toiletries, whatever you want to go into the student boxes. Uh, and also money is appreciated because we do ship those out. So any money for postage would be appreciated. And if you could have all those here by October the 19th, that would be great. Thank you. Let us all have a blessed Sabbath and blessed week. Um, when I get up here, usually you know what I'm talking about. I'm a blood guy. Um, I'm not going to ask you for blood anymore this year. We're done. Our last draw, drive was October 1st. Um, we didn't quite make our quota. Uh, normally we run about 21 units. Um, we made 19. Um, the power red system that they use was down for this drive for whatever reason. Um, <clears throat> if that would have been working, we'd have been over our quota. Um, but as an average, 
we're on par, even with the poor drive in July or June, excuse me, which everybody has. <clears throat> I usually get up here and tell you about all the cool stuff, like how many teaspoons it takes to save a baby and all that stuff. <clears throat> I want to bring this more real school, so maybe you guys get a, a more feeling. I, this is in house. Um, these are stats from the Red Cross website that I have access to. Um, does anybody have any idea how many drives we've had total since we started? Here at our church, we've had eight drives. Thank you. you yeah, you had the eight right. <clears throat> so how much blood do you think we've collected in those eight drives? Pints, teaspoons, gallons, just anybody have a wild guess? Craig was pretty close. He said 160 units. It's a 165. So that is 20 gallons of blood. So just how many lives has that saved? So I'm trying to give you guys facts for our church and also um, the, community, so the community that we're drawing in and the people that comment on coming here and like doing it. Um, uh, Leah and Neil Buthorn started this. Uh, they moved to, so this is testimony. They moved to Hot Springs, Nebraska, or uh, South Dakota, excuse me. I've met two people since I've been doing these blood drives that were born and raised in Hot Springs, South Dakota. So is it good, bad, whatever? Um, I have a cabin in western Wyoming. Um, I had a couple come in one time. The lady was scheduled to donate blood. And they got here. They had three little children. But we right down there by the path found a room. We're like, hey, we'll take care of the kids. So the gentleman decided to donate blood also. The town that's closest to my cabin, he knew where it was at. So this is very important for, um, it was a little rough this time because we didn't have a whole lot of volunteers from the church. And I'm, I kind of slacked on this drive because uh, I wasn't available and I didn't get up here and push it. But anything you guys can help. You don't have to donate blood if you're uncomfortable. Like Pastor, he was here at this drive, but eh, he's got prob problems with needles. But we're going to work on him because it took Andrea four times before she got brave enough. And guess what? She donated October 1st. So it can be done if you let God do his work. So I appreciate everybody. You won't hear from me until next year. The next drive, I believe, is February 11th. And I've already got one person signed up for that drive that we have 37 appointments for. So thank you so much. Once again, welcome to our worship service. At this time, the actual worship service starts. Those of us on the platform will kneel, invite you to remain seated with bowed heads. Good morning and happy Sabbath to everyone. I invite you to join in our chorus of praise, one of my favorites in moments like these. In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to the Lord. Singing I love you. Singing, I love you, Lord. 
you to stand for our opening hymn. Don't forget the Sabbath. It's hymn number 388. <laughs> Don't forget the Sabbath the Lord our God hath blessed. Of all the week the brightest, of all the week the best. It brings repose from labor. It tells of joy divine. Its beams of light descending with heavenly beauty shine. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Keep the Sabbath holy and worship him today. Who said to his disciples, I am the living way. And if we meekly follow our Savior here below, he'll give us of the fountain whose streams eternal flow. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Day of sacred pleasure, its golden hours will spend in thankful hymns to Jesus, the children's dearest friend. O oh, gentle, loving Savior, how good and kind Thou art! How precious is Thy promise to dwell in every heart! Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day! Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day! Heavenly Father, what a joy it is to be in your house on the Sabbath day, to be in your presence and in the presence of your Holy Spirit and that you will grow us and you will anchor us more tightly to you that when we leave here we'll be stronger and our love for you will be more and more. May that ever be our experience, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, church family. How many of you received blessings today already? How many have received blessings this week? Aren't they enjoyable to have? You know, I can tell you this morning you received a blessing because God woke you up. He opened your eyes. You're able to get ready for church and come to church and get more blessings. So you can count your blessings constantly. Uh, I saw blessings this morning as I was getting ready for church. I'm looking out the window, and a half a dozen geese were flying real low, and you could just hear their wings. They weren't honking or nothing. Then I saw a bird that you usually would see out in a lake standing up. It's got big, long legs. I don't know what you call him, but he was headed for my pond. And so, you know, and then I come to church, and... Uh, we have a video playing of all the animals and all the creation and everything else. So it just gives you a, a greater appreciation for all that God does for us. Uh, often uh, we give uh, offerings to the church to show our gratitude uh, for God's blessings. Uh, that we've received from him, and, and it's also true that the experience of giving changes us. 
and it changes us because of the blessings we receive for our giving. We just saw and heard from a whole group of people who do things that's giving. They gave their time. Uh, Sharon has been working uh, with Doorstep for so many years, and, and we all give to, to help Doorstep. We give uh, our time, uh, uh, the blood drives. We, we actually we just give our own blood. We're constantly giving, but you know that giving changes us. Uh, it uh, uh, helps us, uh, you know, get grounded in, in what God wants us to do. I'd like to share with you uh, from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58. You know, chapter 58 is just full of blessings already. Uh, if you take the time to read just that chapter. Uh, but I'd just like to share with you verses 10 and 11. And it, uh, it, it reads like this. If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness. And your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those are great words. Those are great promises. And we get those promises by giving. The very first part of, of uh, verse 10 uh, is telling us if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then light will rise in the darkness. And that's what we're doing. It sounds like we're kind of stingy because we, we're trying to get all the blessings we can get. These verses challenge us as Christians to focus more on the needs of others and less on ourselves. And if we do, it can change our perspective on material possessions and priorities. Serving others will help make a difference in our community. The blood, that, uh, the blood drive is to help our community and other communities. Um, what Sharon uh, leads uh, our church in at, at doorstep, for example, um, you know, collecting food and uh, making up kits and stuff for Christmas. Uh, the Pathfinders, you know, the leaders of the Pathfinders, they give so much of their time uh, to help develop uh, these, these uh, young people. Uh, to have the skills that they need uh, just for everyday life. So it's just giving and giving and giving, uh, but that's what we get the blessings for. Uh, you experience satisfaction that you know that your contribution will have a tangible effect. Remember giving, whether it be monetary or time, will transform us into a more compassionate, generous, an empathetic individual as we recognize the value of helping others and the blessings of our own lives. So you should plan uh, for your giving. Uh, our church uh, needs funds. Uh, the, the offering today is going for uh, our church. Uh, uh, I forgot what, how to budget <laughs> that's the word I was looking for <laughs> I know going to the church so um, we need the money of course you know that uh, uh, we, we have high utilities and things like that so um, I pray that you'll uh, consider that it helps us to be able to come and have a place to meet um, so as you contemplate a plan for your giving for the next year, you know, include these things ahead of time. 
And this will help make you a joyful giver because that's what God wants us to be. And we all contribute. We just don't realize sometimes how much we affect other people's lives. Uh, so uh, with that being said, uh, again, that was Isaiah 58, chapter 58. So uh, take a look at that this Sabbath afternoon. I think you'll, you'll get more out of it than what I was able to read to you. So we'll let bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we gather our tithes and offerings, we acknowledge that all things belong to you. Everything we have comes from your hand, and we're merely stewards of your blessings. Help us to recognize your leadership over all aspects of our lives. May these gifts be used to further your kingdom as a testament to our gratitude and trust in you. Guide us to be faithful stewards, using all that you have given us for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, we don't have deacons today, uh, but we have offering uh, in the back of the room. Uh, so if you can uh, please drop your contributions in, in there. I hope you all have a blessed Sabbath. Thank you. The children look forward to this part of the service, and Jennifer is going to be telling the children's story. So as Jennifer comes up, I want the children to go back and get the little baskets and uh, pass them in all three aisles. And uh, remember, this offering goes to support our church school next door. And you're you'd be amazed how it adds up. So thank you for your generosity. And uh, Jennifer, you're on. Wow, we have some givers today. I'm curious what what will be in there. It's a lot of money. Thank you, Terry. Cherry drops. Does anybody know what a cherry drop is? Do you guys do that? Do you guys have monkey bars anymore? They don't know what monkey bars are. Okay, monkey bars are two metal poles that go down into the ground deep, and then there's a metal pole going across, and all of this is welded together so it won't move. And as kids, we'd climb up on this monkey bar, and on this bar that was right here, we would put it right behind our knees, and then we'd carefully sit and keep our, keep our legs pinched like this, and then we'd fall backwards. And we'd swing back and forth, and the bar was right behind our knee. Boy, did we have fun doing that. But there was more that you could do. If you got swinging high enough, your head would come back this way and your knees would be up like this and then when you came back this way, you're up high enough and you drop your feet down and you land. And it was so much fun to be able to do that. So one Sabbath, the pastor's topic today made me think of this. 
It was Sabbath, and it was an exciting day because we were going to go for a church picnic to a place called Gun Park. Who names a park that? I don't know. But that's where we went, Gun Park. And us kids loved going there because it was a huge park. They had a lake, and they had all this playground equipment. And you could go all over the park to all the different playgrounds and have fun. Well, I was myself, and I was always making friends with whomever. And I went to one place, I think I was by myself, and there was another girl there. And she's like, hi, how are you? She wasn't from my church, she was just a girl camping there, I think. And I said, I'm doing fine. And she says, you wanna go play on the monkey bars? And I said, sure, let's go. And then we got to the monkey bars and I was doing all of my normal stuff. And she says, Sh you wanna learn how to do a cherry drop? And I said, sure, what's that? So she showed me how to do the cherry drop. And I was like, ooh, that'll be fun. And so then it was my turn to try it, and she says, now I will help you. So I got up on the monkey bars, I sat down, and I swung back around, and she says, now to do the cherry drop successfully, I need to hold your feet. So my feet are up there, my, I'm hanging like this, she's holding on to my feet as I'm swinging, and I'm getting ready to do the drop where your head comes up and your feet come down, and she held on to my feet, and my feet never came down, and guess what happened? I slammed my forehead into the ground. It even broke blood vessels. And I started crying, and I ran back to my parents, and they're like, what happened? And I told them what happened, and that she'd held my feet. And you know what my dad said to me? He says, you can't let other people control you. You need to be very careful. You need to act with knowledge and not like, well, the Bible says a fool. He did not call me a fool. I've been sleeping on the monkey bars. Oh, wow. So you know what they are? Oh, we have one who knows. That's good. The Bible says, and this is similar to what my dad said, Proverbs 13, 16, every prudent little girl and boy acts with knowledge, but a fool, fool flaunts his folly. A prudent person weighs their options carefully before acting. I probably should have said to that girl, hey, let go of my feet. But I didn't know what would happen. So she held onto my feet and I fell flat on my face. So the lesson I want you to learn from this is, just because someone else tells you how to do something or even tries to control you, you have to stop and you have to say, hold it. What would be the best way to have this happen? How can I protect myself so I don't get hurt? We need to be very careful. All right, is there anybody here who'd like to pray today? Sometimes people up here pray. How do you guys get them to do that? Our Father in heaven, please bless this wonderful day. Bless everyone that came here and make sure that everyone is safe and having fun. Please make sure everyone is doing well. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you can go back to your seats now. I invite the congregation to remember that we have little um, prayer request cards back on the stand near the exit door. And if you have some special request, uh, please uh, don't forget to fill that out and uh, drop it in the box. Because we like to remember the special requests that come our way. At this time, let us kneel together as we pray. Thank you that we know that you love and care for us. And just pray that you'll bless this congregation in a special way. And be with the pastor as he brings the message to us this morning. And Lord, in the last few days, we've been made very much aware of the disaster that has struck the southern part of the United States. Lord, I just pray that uh, you'll be with those uh, relief workers, be with those who've lost so much, and help us to be willing to 
give support in any way that we possibly can. We know there are many agencies that are helping right now. I just pray that we will uh, tune into one of them and give the kind of support that we can do to help the people that are hurting so much. We pray to be in the world situation. It's a mess, especially over in the Middle East with um, Lebanon and Israel and Iran and just uh, all over that Middle East. It seems like there's war there so much, historically and currently. Just pray to be with our congregation here, be with our school next door. May we continue to love you and to serve you. And thank you for this worship service. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Happy Sabbath, Church. Well, before I sing, I would like to uh, share this with you. Um, I grew up singing this song, Me and My Sisters. I'm from a family where everybody's a musician, but I'm regarded as the worst compared to everybody. But anyway, never mind. A um, couple of months ago, uh, we lost our granddad. We is a PCOS, uh dad and one thing I've learned throughout his uh, uh, life as a granddad he was still holding on on God's promises even in his last days unfortunately we were not there to pay our last respect but he was a man who held on to God's promises and even in his last days he was praying and he was encouraging each and one of us to hold on to God's promises. No matter what life throws at, uh, at us, the challenges that we face, we should hold on to God. He is still God, even in the good times and even in the bad times. Okay. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known. But things change when you don't in the God of the mountain is still God in the valley when things go wrong he'll make them right and the God of the good time is still God so easy when life said its best now it's down in the valleys of trials and temptations that sway your faith 
is really put to the test for the God on the mountain is the God in the valley when things go Good morning, happy Sabbath. It's the end of the week, it's the Sabbath day. Y'all sounded so quiet. Happy Sabbath. There you go. I'll be doing scripture reading. My verse, uh, we'll be reading Matthew 11, 28 through 30. If you can all read with me. Come to me, all who you and labor and are heavy laden and will, 